is we have one beaker, and inside that beaker is another beaker. Okay? Everybody sees this beaker? Yeah. Yes? Anybody? Okay, good. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it inside. And this is really when I do feel like a magician that can't keep a secret. So there we go. So now I have a beaker inside of another beaker. Right? And as long as light is passing from the air to the beaker, and the beaker is more dense than the air, what has to happen? There's got to be a refraction, right? And if there's a refraction, there's also a reflection. And if there's a reflection, then there's light that you can see, and that's why you can see the beaker. Right? Even though the beaker is clear, we can still see it because some of the light is being reflected off of it. Then, on the inside, there's air between the two beakers. And then, so it hits the next beaker. And when it hits the next beaker, another reflection occurs. And so that's why you can see the beaker inside the beaker, even though all of them are clear. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what would happen if we had two objects of equal density? What would happen to the speed of the light? Would it speed up, slow down, stay the same? Stays the same, right? Well, just by a freak coincidence, Western oil, okay, has exactly the same optical density as this Pyrex glass. These, these, these beakers are made out of the same stuff that uh, your mom's or your dad's uh, measuring cups are made out of. Okay, you can actually do this at home. It doesn't work with regular glass, though. It needs to be like cooking ware, right? Uh, just, just any old cooking oil. This is a uh, canola oil. Uh, I got this, uh, uh, you know, just cheapo oil, right? And like this is two years old, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't cook with it. I don't want to smell. I throw it out. But until it starts smelling. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if what I've been telling you about the change in density affects reflection. So I'm going to pour the oil into the beaker. Can you all still see the beaker? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because it's real. It's like things from inside the beaker, right? Yeah. Because the inside beaker is the one that's covered up, right? Right. But the outside beaker, there's still air. So you can still see the outside beaker, and you can still see the front wall of the inside beaker. Turns out you actually couldn't see the inside front wall. But most people aren't really that picky, especially from the distance that y'all are at. So now I'm going to add more oil. Boom. No, it doesn't blow up. Oh. I, you know, I used up all the all the all the normal size beakers with the resonance thing. So I I went to go get a, a bigger beaker and <laughs> I didn't have any. I all I have is little beakers now. I blew them all up. <laughs> <laughs> that and these two. There you go. All gone. <laughs> and if you all are on this side, you can see that there's numbers on this side of the beaker. Okay? And you should be able to read the numbers better now because you don't have that annoying other little beaker in the way. And if you're on this side, you should be able to see the marker very clearly now, whereas you probably couldn't have before because of the beaker. And this is a stir rod, right? Well, this stir rod's made out of the same stuff that stuff is. Oh, God. Goodbye, stir rod. <laughs> and I'm moving the other beaker around in there. It didn't dissolve. It's still in there. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It turns out that, like, you know, where the glass bends around the rim and stuff, then the optical density isn't exactly uniform. And since that's true, then you can still see a little bit of halo. But if y'all want to come up and, and see this closer, you might have Don't push on it. So it only works with Western oil, right? Huh? It only works with uh, cooking oil. I, uh, it, it's not just Western. I mean, just any cooking oil, pretty much. Oh, and deep cider. I've tried, I've tried, you know, generic brand Western oil. That's all we're going to Wow. That's so good. No, what? I just what? Okay. 
Okay. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so shady. Thank you. I'm, oh my god. <laughs> this is the morning class. <laughs> oh, okay. What? Let me think. Oh, don't. Nasty. I'm not putting that in my head. Yeah, I wouldn't drink that. That would make you feel better. Oh, my head is hurting. That's like a heart attack. It's like a dog. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. That's cool, I guess. <laughs> so again, this shows what causes light to bend isn't the fact that it's glass, it's not the fact that it's water, it's none of that stuff. It has everything to do with the fact that the two objects have the same optical density. If they have different densities, then the velocity of the light is different and it causes it to bend. Questions? No. All right. So let me clean this up real quick. <laughs> no, I gotta use a stir rod, otherwise a little beaker falls out. Oh. Worst things have happened. To drop the beaker, never mind. Now that one, I've done that too. That's no fun. Because then you have broken glass covered in oil. Oh, <laughs> Not <you> fun. That <laughs> 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 you can't see. <laughs> That's when I get a student in his extra credit. Why did you see the bottom team just like tripped out? Did you just do that randomly? Yeah. Weird. Matt, you could hold me. Occasionally the fluid gets hot enough to where it just... <laughs> It has to vent. I'd rather it vent than do something what would happen if it didn't vent. Uh, that's it. So